This video shows a case of DALC in post acanthamoeba corneal scar. So we'll start the case by performing the usual centration and marking of the corneal center and then doing a small paracentesis to inject small air bubbles in the anterior chamber. This is followed by partial thickness trephination to a depth of 350 microns. After checking the depth of the trephination, I usually perform a small incision in the corneal stroma to introduce the blunt air injection cannula. In this case, the first air injection resulted in just stromal whitening without the formation of any bubble. So I decided to reintroduce the cannula in another location. At this time, Injection of air resulted in the formation of a type 2 bubble evident by the clear margin and reaching the periphery of the cornea. So if I have a formed type 2 bubble, I usually perform a manual dissection technique and to complete this I need more stromal writing. So I am now injecting air in all the quadrants of the cornea to produce stromal writing. Then the usual superficial keratectomy, removing the superficial layers of the stroma. Now I am aiming to dissect deeper layers of the stroma as far as possible. I usually use the stromal micro bubbles as a guide, performing a tunnel over one of the micro bubbles and then introducing the viscoelastic cannula in the tunnel to perform blunt dissection of the stromal layers. After completing dissection, the separated part of the stroma is divided and each part is cut till the trephination groove, exposing the underlying bed. The underlying bed is then inspected and in this case, we'll find that still there is some micro bubbles indicating that we need to remove more layers of the straw. Now I am doing another tunnel over one of the micro bubbles and continuing the process of plant dissection, introducing the viscoelastic cannula into the deeper layers and trying to separate more stromal layers. The process of dissection is continued over the whole surface of the cornea and after completing it the stroma is again divided and each quadrant is cut till the trephination Groove. At this step, we are going to inspect the residual bed. Type 2 bubble is now evident, slightly decentered to the left side, but it seems that there is another bubble in the right side, which is a type 1 bubble. Type 1 bubble is highlighted in black hours and type 2 bubble is highlighted in blue hours. If we follow the plan of type 2 bubble, it will lead us to bare decimate membrane, which can burst easily and will make surgery more difficult and risky. So we are going to follow the plan of type 1 bubble. So now I'm going to incise the stroma over type 1 bubble using super plate. After incising the stroma over the type 1 bubble, the viscoelastic cannula is introduced through the created hole to complete dissection in the desired plan. The stroma is divided and cut till the trephination groove. Now type 2 bubble is evident. Now I'm going to wash the viscoelastic over the predesmatic layer and interestingly there is 
a spontaneous collapse of the type 2 bubble. Then our graft will be sutured after removing the cement membrane using first eight cardinal sutures and then my technique of preference in these cases is to use double running sutures. For more details about this technique and management of a type 2 bubble, please refer to this publication. Thank you.